Hello guys, I'm Lucian and we will integrate today OSA in Unity using Playmaker. Well, about OSA I think you should already know what it is. So if you don't know, please check my other video where I'm talking about what it is and how it's implemented for most programmers, but you can get some basic concepts from there. I will also try to explain them here and basically you can make list views, grid views and anything like so leaderboards chats any kinds of lists and grids and starting with version 4.2 we can uh, use playmaker so you won't need to code of course not all of the demo scenes have playmaker support so uh, most of them still require you to write some code but depending on how many people will request uh, Playmaker support and in which scenes they request, we can implement that. Here's what we will do today. Let me first show you a quick demo. So I first show you what we would do and then I will tell you everything uh, about how to do it. A fast demo would be Plane array controller, scroll bar at right here, this there. And uh, uh, this is what you will get. We can add index one, which is the second one, we can remove or add or index two, remove or add. All right. Another thing I uh, I forgot to show you. This. All right. This. So we can scroll to the item number. This. Right. Alright, and an independent component is the daytime picker, and you use it like this, it's very simple, it's this action, and it fires uh, an event when the user picks uh, a date and a time. Alright, so first, the requirements, Unit, this version of Unity 2017.1.0 F3, at least this one and playmaker uh, 1.9.0 or above uh, we can also support this one 1.8 but but uh, only if enough people will need it so we'll see about that and also 4.2 or above so uh, once you have this we can uh, go through the all of the steps so i'll try to explain just the basic, very basic concepts of uh, how I ch changed some of the parts of OSA to support Playmaker and to be easier to to use. Because at the very core of it, it's uh, it uses something very similar to MVC. You don't need to know that stuff. We should only focus on this part. So how it worked and how it works when you want to go into code and program it yourself is you keep all of your data as a list of models and a model is simply a collection of properties of an item so for programmers you have a list of models so you have object name photo url as in colors for example this is an example model so these are the properties of an object, right? And you can store them easily in a list or an array list. But with the Playmaker, we can still do that using hash tables. But what an item actually has, all of these are uh, included in a hash table for that item particularly. So in Playmaker, we will have a list of hash tables, right? And the hash table has a key 
and the value and the key will be the property name and the value could be any type of object it could be a texture it could be a string it could be a color anything that playmaker supports so and anything you would ever need i think so this is the the core difference between uh, how it's used programmatically and how it's used in uh, playmaker and for very basic scenarios like you'll see in the plain array example here you won't even use hash tables you will simply use two arrays because in the, this example um, the items uh, have a title and they have an, uh, a photo URL so I have two arrays one of titles for each item and one of photo URLs so uh, it should be pretty obvious how I use those and uh, it, it's easier to use arrays but I'm using playmakers built in arrays not uh, data maker arrays or other things just to keep it simple and of course you can't have too many items there I saw if you exceed like a hundred of them they will it starts to be very slow and uh, if you have too many items you would need to use the other approaches uh, that I will tell you here about lazy data helper all right now uh, we would cover the data source types so this is exactly what I explained you again there are two different ways of storing properties about each item in memory you can use plain arrays and you can use this lazy data helper that we provide so when you first want to get started or if you have a very simple scenario and only a few hundreds items you can use this approach otherwise you should use this approach um, and here you should create your own list arrays you would create an array for each property as I said as I said um, and you would modify them like insert delete you know and um, After each modification, you would notify OSA about the, this operation and we provide actions for this. Uh, I, will, I will tell you about them here, the very end. Uh, so when you insert an item, you would also have an OSA notify insert. So you would insert uh, the title of that item in, in an array, then you would insert the URL of that item and then you would notify also about the actual insertion and it, it would uh, update the views it will insert a new uh, a new game object in the scene and that's basically how it works it's safe for removing uh, things and how the lazy data helper proxy works is uh, fundamentally different so the, the most important advantage of it is you can have large amount of, uh, of data we support like around 2 billion data so of course they are not initialized all at once that's why it called uh, that's why uh, it's called lazy data helper it's a lazy data initializing common term yeah so this creates the properties of an item only when first needed so if you re uh, notify OSA that you have like 2000 items um, it uh, it uh, allocates the some memory for uh, for those items, and uh, then it it asks for items, uh, but only at the position that your scroll view is at. So, if you have like two thousand items and only six or five are shown, it only requests you the properties of those six items to be shown, and. Uh, after that it caches them and next time if, if you scroll down it requests the property of the, of the next items and if you scroll back then uh, it uses the cached properties and it, it doesn't request it doesn't request you to give the properties each time it sees an item and how it keeps track of those things it's uh, using, using the items index so it's simply uh, uses the position of the item in your list to link the properties to it uh, Don't worry if it doesn't make sense now. I'll go and explain it uh, when I'll actually run the scenes and uh, it will make much more sense, but 
it's very useful to also explain them now. So the properties of each item is stored internally. So it, uh, like, like I said before, uh, this method stores your properties are as a list of hash tables. So each hash table is linked to one item. It simply has keys as strings and values as any object type. And another advantage with this approach is that it automatically notifies OSA for changes. So you don't need to change anything apart from notifying OSA about uh, the change that you are doing. And then it fires an event and it asks you for uh, the data about the new items that are being shown. Whether you remove some items or you add some items in each case some new items will be shown and then it needs those properties and it asks you for them. Here's the process explained. So if your items can be retrieved instantly, like when you have to download them, then you need to load them in a, in a list before. You can uh, load them before directly in Lazy Data Helper and then you, you would have a checkbox uh, notify OSA it, uh, it's called and you can uncheck that. So. You store that data beforehand in Lazy Data Helper, so it's not lazy anymore. You store all of them at once, but you don't notify OSA. Uh, you notify it only after the last one is uh, inserted. So, actually, when when you finished downloading your items, then you notify OSA. Hey, um, this is the new count that I want to show, and uh, it's called a reset operation, and it it, it actually resets the entire view and asks you for the properties of the items that are being shown at that moment um, and so this is that, that step and uh, like I said the visible items will receive an update views event you can change the name of this event if you preloaded all of our items then you would just simply retrieve them and update the views so you can have any prefab type you can update them however you want and if you didn't download them beforehand, you would create them at that moment and uh, then insert them in uh, Lazy Data Helper and actually go in back in the up, uh, state for uh, the update views where you retrieve the items and... Alright. Um, and any modification should be done to this Lazy Data Helper Proxy Operation action and it's, it, uh, it, it's included so you can search for it and you can do inserts, you can do remove, uh, reset, clear uh, and actually this is all of them I guess. Yeah, this any operation that you're doing updates the internal list of, um, of properties and also notifies also about the operation but you can choose to not notify it if you want to bulk insert more items at once like if you have to insert like a thousand items at once you will only notify osa at the end so done with theory you don't need to remember all of this at once i will explain it all in detail all right so i'm assuming you already have playmaker um you would import osa in your project Alright, and here we have in plugin support, Playmaker, we have PM support, which stands for Playmaker support. You also have a README here. It's good to read it, of course. Alright, so what we have here is just one scene, some prefabs, and all the scripts needed for this. Um, basically, we have controllers and item prefabs those are those are be the two game objects on, on which you need to have fsms all right so it added this to your scripting finds here in player settings here at the end this it added all right um now on a new scene we need a canvas and we need this. Alright, so this is the wizard. I will go into it more in depth now. So you can have a horizontal or vertical uh, list or grid. We'll do a vertical list 
you see these are playmaker grid and playmaker list otherwise you just need to generate one from template for if you want to manually create one uh, programmatically so we will choose playmaker list and then for each uh, type of uh, playmaker uh, OSA you can have uh, multiple controllers that are just templates you can modify them uh, if you want afterwards so we will just choose uh, PM plane array controller and for each controller you have some compatible item types so for this we have only this PM list plane array item all right so we initialize and we remove the scrolling because it's not needed it's just a leftover so uh, we will just hit play to see it all right I forgot to add a scroll bar there was an option but it doesn't matter now uh, okay let's go from where to start so first we have OSA this is the script it, need, it needs to be disabled first you have some parameters here I explained them in tap in my other video but uh, it's pretty obvious what it does and there are tooltips for them uh, then we have playmaker was a proxy through which uh, the FSMs communicate with OSA and uh, we have the controller which is just an FSM and here we I also have some buttons and an input to add and remove an item at the specified index and these buttons are just triggering some events in the controller FSM so pretty basic this thing uh, okay now let's see the controller let's see the variables first you can see this is a uh, this is exposed here because it needs a reference to the OSA proxy so uh, the config OSA is this one and it's menu it's automatically assigned when you create the, the OSA through the wizard so uh, it already points to it uh, then it's already assigned because it was a prefab and it's this one so it index input field game object it's uh, the input field that that's used to retrieve the index when you execute those buttons plus and minus one um, all right these are just temporary variables that I'm using on multiple purposes so they have no meaning they are just temporary uh, this is the initial count to retrieve which is 40 by default is just just an example value you can have any value there and the controller also has some sample titles and sample URLs because I'm not retrieving data from anywhere I'm already having it and I'm just creating random items um, whenever needed to add one here so uh, the actual arrays that I'm using are these so you can see they are empty at the beginning and I'm specifically naming them small array because huge arrays don't work uh, very well you need to use the lazy data helper proxy right so this is uh, these are the variables on the controller uh, let's see the events so the events are simple you have insert one random which is triggered by this plus one and you have remove one which is triggered by this button and uh, this is used uh, here I guess yeah here so start on setup you can do anything here if you need it start generating random data generate one data item so we take a random item from the sample titles variable so this one and storing storing it here tmp string and also a url in tmp string 2 and then we check if the current count is uh, this one the initial count to retrieve and if it is then uh, we fire this event random generation generation uh, finished tmp uh, int is assigned here so array length we are taking here the length of the array storing it here and then comparing and of course here uh, we are we are adding his tmp string and tmp string to from uh, to this smile array item um, all right and 
after this is uh, fired it uh, it goes here and this is a special uh, not a special it's just it's an action that uh, we provide to communicate with osa and uh, it just needs uh, a target osa and it, it simply fires the initialization for it after which it finishes the state and again config osa is this one and it's here uh, visible in inspector so it's this right this proxy okay so after after this uh, initializes it fires the finished event then after that we uh, notify it um, that we notify it uh, to set the current count of items to be visible to 40 and these are some optional things so keep velocities uh, if you modify the count while the scroll is scrolling the keep velocity won't pause the scrolling won't stop the scrolling so usually you will, you will want this uh, checked and this content panel panels and edge stationary uh, if you want for the items to start from the bottom to the top usually you'd want to use this so anytime you insert an item instead of them to go down to be pushed down they will be pushed up so in the list of properties there's no concept of keeping the end edge stationary it's, uh, when you insert an item at a specified index it it's only one way of inserting them but when you do it visually you need to choose to push the following items at the bottom or to push the items before the index to push them up that's why this is needed here and the initial count to retrieve this is the count that was generated here so we notify osa to set the count to 40 and uh, remember here um, we only added items to our uh, arrays but uh, we didn't notify osa about it because we wanted to insert them in bulk and only at the end um, notify it about the count so it's uh, it's faster this way all right and after it finished it goes into idle state where these two events are triggered by these two buttons and uh, you can either insert one or either remove one so uh, i don't i don't think i need to explain both of them they they it, it's uh, obvious what they do so they are just opposites all right uh, insert has uh, it uses this built-in um, action to get the index from here and it, it gets it in uh, this tmp int um, and then uh, so the index at which we would want to insert one item is uh, will be stored here and then we simply get a random item from uh, the sample titles and we store it here and then we insert it in the small array item titles at this index right from here and the value is here the tmp string from here right and uh, i think this array get random is uh, from the osa pack because we we, we didn't uh, find one built-in action like this and we just created an array get random all right and also the same thing with the sample urls right we sample one url add it here then we insert it in uh, the urls array at this index and this is the value and then we notify osa about this opera operation so uh, this, this will be the tmp integer will be will have this value from the input field so this index we notify that we inserted one item and this is the target also that we notify right so it's good to have it in one variable because you can modify it in one place only here all right and the remove one is just does the same thing using notify remove so this is what the controller does pretty straightforward so uh, this is the item now and this is even more straightforward uh, the item has this shared views holder model behavior script this is an interface between playmaker and osa and you can specify what events to fire 
at specified moments. So whenever the item needs to update his views, uh, you have this event, and whenever it index changed due to an insert or remove event, this event is changed. And I will tell you shortly why we need this. Um, and anytime uh, an item is recycled, uh, a game object is recycled, this event will be fired because uh, items are recycled constantly. So each item is reused to display different uh, items, different properties, depending on which scroll position. All right. And here we have the setup. If you want to do any setup there, then it goes into idle. And anytime the item needs to be shown, it fires the update views. Um, so to explain who fires this event, uh, we need to look at this. So this view holder will fire this event. And uh, how it knows how, when to fire it? Well, um, this uh, Playmaker OSA proxy knows what items are shown. And more importantly, knows when an item is shown for the first time. And then it searches for that uh, item and notifies this um, script that uh, it has just shown. And then this script fires this event here. Right, so now you know who fires this, hopefully. I don't know if I explained it right, but uh, you don't need to know actually that. It's just in case you want to know. So first, it retrieves its data. And here I'm using get FSM array, array item because the arrays are on the controller. So uh, I'm getting on, uh, from the small array items titles at this index. Uh, I am taking the title, right, and storing it in the variable title. And let me tell you what current index is doing because this is automatically assigned for you by this by the shared views holder. This is uh, each time the the views holder is recycled, and actually each time it becomes visible or needs to display new data this current index will be automatically set for you. So this is because uh, each item will be reused, each game object will be reused. So this FSM will be reused. So you need to change this uh, current index. I mean, uh, it's automatically changing for you, but uh, you need to understand this because uh, it's important that uh, the data that's displayed by one game object will be different at different points in time. So um, this is very useful. Uh, so I I put an underscore here to signify that this is a bit special. You only need to retrieve its value. You don't need to assign it or anything. And let me also tell you about the variables here. So this is the image view, which is, uh, I mean, I just call it that way because it's a view. And it's already assigned uh, in this template. Likewise, the title view. So they are just the title. So it's here. The title is here. This one. It's a text with a shadow. And the background image. So it has a ROM image. And this remote image behavior. It's a script that we are including, uh, which allows you to download images from the internet. And raw image works uh, easier that way with this. Uh, uh, with this approach. So, uh, and how you update this one is uh, through an action that uh, I, I will show you shortly. It's called remote image behavior source setter. So you have the target. So the target will be this, and this will be the URL, the image URL, right? So easy. Okay, back here. Um, so again, this. Uh, gets uh, the title for the current index and stores it in a variable called title. So we are storing it in a variable. We don't uh, assign it to a view at this point at this uh, state because it just retrieves the data. That's what it does. And also the image URL, the same thing. It go, it uh, takes this 
array from the controller and uh, tells it to to give it the image URL at the current index. And after that, so having the image URL and title assigned, then it goes to update views and set property sets the text of this text here, right? And remote image behavior setter, like I said, it sets the image URL to this uh, image view. And then it goes into idle state. And the thing here is that this remote image behavior setter, it internally checks some things for you. Because an image takes time to download, um, it's, it's easier to have this in script already implemented for you. So uh, you just tell it to load an, an image and then the, the state is finished and you are in idle state. So as far as you're concerned, you're, uh, you already done your job and it, uh, it will load the image by itself. So, uh, and any, if, if before the image downloaded, it goes again and retrieve my data and update my views, then the, uh, the current image that's downloading will be canceled and then it will start downloading the new image. So, uh, I don't know if you wanted to know that or if you need to know that, but, uh, it's just magic, right? It will work. All right, so I guess this is it with uh, the um, this uh, plain array template. So once again, this one. Oh yeah, let, let me show you. So this is the scroll view, the viewport, and the content, right? And the, here we have some items. This one, this one, this one. They won't be in uh, the same order always because uh, of the optimization process but uh, you can see how for example this one it will go into the update views um, and this states multiple times as I scroll let me do this all right you can see it how it will after it goes off the screen it will pop up here and it will go again, it will go into the recycle and then here I, I also tell you about recycle story I didn't mention. It. Let me show you so. Oh, alright, I'm, I'm at the end. It can't uh, do anything. Let's select this one, alright? So it goes off the screen. You can see it recycled and then um, when it becomes visible, it will call these things. It already became, it became visible, so let's go, alright, back. Recycle, all right, see it, and so it's uh, recycled multiple times, all right? And if you go into the variables here, you can see it's let's go, let's go the start. So this has uh, the index current index zero, and when it's recycled, current index is changed to five because it, it, it needs to display another items, right? Then it goes to 10. You can see it here, right? And the title also changes. This is just a variable. Uh, it, uh, it's not used after this state. So it's only used to pass data from this state to this state. So afterwards, uh, you can just ignore it. You can see how it uh, changes, right? Uh, when uh, I'm changing this title is here in recycle you don't need to do this but i'm providing this state just so you can clear any data or anything that is associated with this item um, at this point uh, i'm just assigning an empty value to title and image url but uh, i don't know you you can just not use it at all if uh, you have a very simple item like i have here so because title and image url are not used uh, except passing data from here to here you can just uh, not use this but it's good to know about this so this fires anytime an item uh, goes off the screen uh, or is removed and uh, maybe you have some important things associated with an item that needs to disappear to free memory and this is where you can do that so we've covered this <laughs> well actually I've 
shown you a plain array with a list, right? And I should have chosen. All right, doesn't matter. All right. All right. Now we will use something different. Instead of plain array controller, we will use lazy data controller, and we have a simple item and a content size fitter item. So I'll try to explain both the content size fitter uh, item and the lazy controller at the same time because th there's not too mad too much things to say about this all right um so basically this is an a game object and if you previously made the, the scroll view with items of different sizes uh you most probably use the content size fitter and uh, probably horizontal group and these are just cosmetic things and as you see this shared views mono behavior is the same this is the same it, uh, it this is this variable uh, is uh, stores this controller and uh, the background image is uh, I made it to envelope the parent, so it only is just a cosmetic thing. Don't think about it too much. So the image will only show here in the this area, and that, that's why I also made a mask. I put a mask here on the item, right? And it also has this remote image behavior, so it downloads the image from the internet, and uh, the thing that cho chooses what the size of the entire item will be is this title text so uh, I, I put it a minimum height so it can be at least this 36 pixels or a good thing to know here is the vertical overflow property needs to be to overflow for horizontal scroll views so it will be if you have tr truncate you have some problems at some points and it depends, maybe some Unity versions only have the, uh, this problem, I don't know. Um, so you can see this changes, right? Okay. So nothing too special here. Now on the OSA, nothing special here also. Actually, it's the, the same. It's the same. And the controller has now uh, a playmaker, also lazy data helper proxy. Um, and this uh, stores the data for you. As I said, uh, uh, it stores it uh, as a list of hash tables for each item. And it needs uh, a reference to your OSA. So this one. And uh, the FSM, the controller FSM also needs this. Right, and uh, and again, this freeze content and edge on add remove. I've explained that previously for the plane array. Um, yeah, let's start with the controller now. Uh, let's see if the new there are new variables. Like I said, this is the data helper proxy. Um, Oh yeah, that's it. It's uh, attached to the game object itself, and because this is a prefab here somewhere, uh, it's already linked. You see, it's pointing to itself because it's this uh, component, right? So the index input field is uh, this one here. The OSA is this one, right? Already linked by the wizard. Scroll to input field. This is this input field. And when you press the button, it's, it will scroll to the item with that index specified here. And the set count input field is this one here. So if you want to set the item count at a specified uh, number, that will do it. And again, we have the data here, the sample data here, URLs and titles. And when an item is created, I'm randomly taking a title and a URL from here. So these are just temporary variables. All right, and now the events are the same 
and two more events from for these two other buttons simple all right now if we go in the setup but uh, state uh, this does nothing then initializing also again this action that initializes it then this one they do nothing but it's template so most probably you will want to do something there I don't know so it's good to have them and then we have the reset items and uh, what this does is uh, I'm using this for two purposes first to initialize the first amount of items to be shown which is taken from this input field and also anytime the reset with count event is uh, triggered by this button so what it does it takes the uh, index from here it stores it in a variable and then we have this also lazy data helper operation right and uh, unlike uh, with uh, the plain arrays example we don't have uh, an operation uh, an action for each operation uh, and it's also easier to have only one action here because you specify which operation you want to do clear refresh remove insert so refresh it's a particular case of reset where it just refreshes the current uh, amount of items so if you have 10 items it refreshes them for example if you modify your uh, the properties of your item externally and uh, you just call refresh but again um, this does a refresh of uh, all of the visible items so uh, it depends maybe we will include a refresh item at index in the future not maybe surely you will see refresh item because if you only modify one item uh, externally you would want to refresh only that item to refresh its views I mean uh, so here we reset this is the uh, the data helper proxy uh, to which we sent this uh, operation and uh, this is the, the count right and uh, after it's finished it goes into idle where you can do four things you can insert remove reset or scroll to right and uh, scroll to it's simple it takes this index here it put it here and it uh, you have this action scroll to because th this is not an operation of uh, based on the data it does not modify the data it's not an operation it's it's an action so it's a separate action so uh, like you will see here inserting one or removing one we'll use this one custom action lazy data helper operation and this one is uh, an action in itself uh, and you specify the index uh, and then you would uh, choose if you want it instantly or if you want it over time if you want it if you would press this uh, this here will uh, disappear right so you have the duration of uh, 0.3 we can make it 0.7 and uh, these are just to fine-tune your what is the point target uh, where you want your specific uh, item at this index to appear so uh, you can play with them yourself but basically you would want 0.5 and 0.5 so you'd want the, the middle of the item this 0.5 is the middle of the item to be in the middle of the viewport right and if you want the top of the item you would put zero here to be at the top of the viewport you would put zero here right and this is the target also that you send this command to and uh, again you have inserting one triggered by this event triggered by this button and uh, you have uh, this it takes the it is the index here it put it here uh, and it fires this uh, operation it executes this operation on this proxy at this index and the count is one so it notifies the helper proxy that you inserted one uh, item at this uh, index yeah. and it notifies it right yeah I forgot to say that you can choose to notify OSA or not usually you keep this to true unless your application is slowing down and uh, then you would need to see especially when you are inserting items multiple items at once you would uh, want to notify OSA and 
now the item which uh, has more states now and yeah it has some new the current index as i said it automatically set for you temporary variables the image this the osa controller right and the osa controller uh, data helper proxy this is cached for you here in the setup because uh, it's easier to access uh, afterwards so each uh, instead of getting the component each time you need it, you get it once here from the author controller and set it uh, here. And each time you need it, you just use this variable. All right, these are uh, again variables that uh, are used to pass data from here to here and then to here. Retrieve my data, then update image view, update data view. Right, and now we have to. For each property, we have uh, a variable here, k image URL and k title. So they are just uh, here to store this value. So I'm naming uh, the variable the same as the value it contains. Uh, and this is useful because you don't want typos or stuff like that. You, for example, when you retrieve uh, the data, you just specify the property instead of manually typing it. Let's go here now right here so after this it will go to idle and from idle it can update views or uh, fire this event so um, I'll first explain uh, the update views so it will be like on the plane race example um, and again retrieve my data uh, you would use this custom action try get item so try get item and you would specify the proxy so is this one when uh, the that we cached beforehand and the index uh, as I said it's already set for you you specify the index and the you specify the number of properties that your items have and we have two properties and this is, will be the key of the first property and this will be the type and where we want to store it, right? The title. And the same for key image URL. Yes, the key image URL string store value image URL. And it can do two things. If it uh, finds the item, if it finds the property already cached, uh, it will call the finish uh, state. It will go here, right? If not, like, like it uh, said here, it will fire an event that you specify. So. Uh, an event is this create item data and it goes here so now you would retrieve your properties from somewhere from your data store from wherever you have them on the disk on uh, an XML note uh, I don't know um, and again if you need to download your items you need to do it beforehand I will show you in the uh, XML uh, with the data maker templates at the moment like uh, I've done previously uh, I'm using this FSM array get random item from the controller where it stores these variables, sample titles and sample URLs, right? So, and from sample titles, I'm getting a random item from of type string, of course. You, you need to specify this. And we store it here in TMP string two. And again, for uh, sample URLs, we uh, type string one, right? and uh, the sample URL, uh, we get a random one and store it in uh, TMP string two. And uh, here, item creator. So it's lazy data helper proxy item creator. And what this does, it notifies uh, the data helper proxy that an item was created. And you specify what the proxy is and at which index you want to create this item and the, you specify here the items properties let's disable debug ah oh, better sorry for that i didn't see it so we have property type value right this. after that it goes into the same state and it again tries to get an item and it should get it now and it will call the finish and it will go here and today, uh, first update the image view again with this remote image behavior setter 
Alright, and afterwards it goes here. And I have two separate states because you can see that into this state you can also come after this event. And I will explain in a few seconds, I will explain that. And in title view I'm uh, building a string because now I want uh, to, dis to also display the current index of the item. Uh, so I'm building, I'm putting this, then the current index, then this, and the space, and then the title. And I'm storing it in this TMP string and setting the property of the title view, this one, yeah, uh, this value, right? And then I go into the idle. Now, um, the current index change on insert remove. I mean, the, the name of the event says all uh, everything that it does. So anytime you insert or remove an item, some of the existing items will change their indices, right? So if you have six items in your list and as a simple example, simplest example, if you insert one item at the top of the list at the zeroth index, uh, this will mean all of the items need to be pushed down. So the item that had the zero index uh, afterwards will have the, the index one. And that that has the index one, uh, it will have index two. So it makes sense, right? And what you want at that point is because only the position of uh, the item was changed in your data list and in your game object list, you don't want to update its views again because it, it already has the views updated. You only want, in this case, because I want to also display the current index, you would only want to, for example, update the title because that's the only thing that changes. The image is the same because the models, the data properties in your list uh, are, are shifted. They are not changed, right? So uh, when I'm in idle and receive this event, I'm just executing everything in the state again. So th this is why I need two of them because it's easier to reuse them, right? And I will shortly tell you about how uh, this works live. And again here, I'm setting this fellows to none. And you can do anything that uh, needs to be cancelled or deleted here. So let me tell you about this uh, live here. So, uh, okay, so as you see, we have items of different uh, heights and uh, the images are downloading. So, you can see here. So, let's go at the top now and select this one. So, uh, this, yeah. And if I insert one at zero index, you can see it appears this is the zero index here, right? Uh, if I insert one at this index, all of the items that are visible will receive this current index change event. Let me select the next one, right? This one. So to show you that all of them, not only the one where I'm inserting, are receiving this item. So uh, if I do this, you saw it current index changed. And you can see that this item was inserted, but this ones didn't change too much. Only their index changed. So the image, their image wasn't uh, redownloaded. So uh, and also it, their text wasn't requested again from the data helper. Um, if uh, let's see if at index one, if I add one, you can see that this will uh, be pushed down. And instead of having index one, we have index two. So, and here a space was created, and the new in the a new item was uh, was uh, created here. Actually, it was reused, but uh, it doesn't matter. And again, if you remove them, you can see at index one, which is this one, the second item, you just remove, 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 remove. Right, and the indices are the same. All right, so you can add as many items as you can here. Like you can have around two billion. Let me add a, a scroll bar faster here. 
the scroll bar uh, top to bottom. All right, and uh, this is needed to communicate with uh, OSA. Okay, I guess it's bottom stop. Yeah. All right. Right. Okay. Um, so this is with the. Uh, this is all you need to know about the lazy data helper. So at this point, you should be able to implement almost any type of item retrieval and item updating. You can have any data source type. And as an addition to this, so we have the data maker XML templates. You need the data maker unity package and you can take it from uh, their uh, website. All right, uh, here in readme, I uh, linked to their asset, to their playmaker asset and their data maker add-on which is here you can download it or search to go into google and now we will uh, import this all right and what this did uh, it allowed us to create um, this lazy data helper xml controller and now I'm using grid, you can also do it with a list of course, but because we didn't uh, use a grid for now, I will use the grid. Check the scroll bar now. And PM lazy XML controller. All right, and this is the only prefab available. And uh, this is the same. The OSI is the same. The XML item, it's the same. Right, only that uh, when you have a grid, you need to have this layout. So for lists, you can have the views directly as uh, children of the actual views holder. This, but uh, when you have a grid, you need to have a child views with a rec mask to the attached to it. And these are the same as you see here. So uh, this is this. The also controller linked here and just in case you didn't know pretty late to mention it but uh, uh, config was a controller so this is this right if with the inspector checked it disappears here see all right and it's already linked for you and let's start with the controller as always and we have some variables here uh, let's first uh, go here. So this is the same only we have this additional checkbox and But it does uh, you have two Possibilities you can preload all the nodes in memory or you can retrieve uh, each node individually And with this data maker XML proxy it takes some significant time to retrieve individual uh, nodes anytime they are needed so usually it's best to preload all of them so that way you can use the same FSM either for downloading XML from the web and extracting all the, all of the nodes at once or uh, reading the XML from the disk. And here the data maker XML proxy, I won't get too much into detail. So you can watch some videos on this. They have a tutorial for this data maker XML pro proxy. So you can watch it and then come back all right so we store the reference uh, for this uh, data miracle proxy so we can access it later and uh, the actual content of the proxy will be stored here right and uh, I'm using one of the these, uh, files here so these are 7,000 items right if we go here each item has four lines so you can format the data however you want you can have the title be a property here instead of a child so as you can see I have like 30k lines so 
that's something um, and if we go back here so I'm, I'm using uh, data from the disk but of course you can download it and use it that way uh, and if you work with JSON they also provide you with a JSON to XML converter on the same page uh, where you take the data maker right now let's edit this the controller so the variables in the controller the same variables that uh, you already know and uh, this stores the node count because so if we preload all of them you we need this one right we store it here and um, this are used only if preload all is true this and they are just uh, variables used here let's see we need completely in in this state I will, I will explain them in a second they are used so because playmaker doesn't allow you to run too many loops in a same frame uh, I limited uh, the number of things that it can do in uh, in a frame by using uh, these variables so I have a chunk ma max size so uh, I set it to 100 so I will read 100 nodes then wait one frame and then again read one, 100 nodes until um, all of the nodes were uh, read right and this is the chunk max size which is uh, fixed then uh, this um, I will explain the, uh, these when I'll go here let's start so from the setup we are initializing Mosa right then doing any additional stuff there if needed then using the XML select nodes action that's uh, built in in uh, data maker we specify the proxy which is the game object itself then uh, we have an expat query so I don't know too much about expat query I didn't use it uh, too much but for this for this format here when you have an item and uh, it has a property name category and it has all of them are category order so I just uh, put it there to for example to have an example and they have two properties it has in, uh, a title and in a new URL right then they are just uh, children notes and uh, they have a value inside them and how would you retrieve those is using this uh, expat query so uh, I recommend you go and uh, read more about expat query if you use it in your uh, project because it's useful but if I try if I can uh, try to explain it uh, it uh, this this tells you to if I remember correctly it tells you to get all of the nodes that are of type item and that they have the category order and uh, for that to work you would need to have a parent node and it actually tells give me all the children of this node that are of type item and that have the prop that yeah that have the property category set to order and this is what it does and this is actually a predicate and you can have multiple of this one like you can have another property here with uh, and like this and it, it uh, returns a list of the, the nodes and all of their children and the result we don't store the raw result uh, anywhere here the variable we store it as a reference in memory so uh, we need to memorize this ref xml items and uh, we store the node count here in this uh, variable the node count because we will need to use it uh, afterwards and uh, here we do two things if we set the preload all to true we just call the init completely here and we preload all of the nodes and uh, if we set it lazily we just call reset items 
to the node count notifying the OSA the proxy oh, is uh, the controller itself so I don't need to store it in a variable and uh, then uh, OSA creates the amount the needed amount of items to fill the viewport and uh, it does the same thing as uh, previously explained each item is uh, asked about its uh, properties and first time it won't find them then it will ask this lazy data helper proxy about the item it won't find it then it will go into a state create item it will create it it will add it in the lazy data helper proxy and then come uh, back to retrieve my data state and uh, I will explain that you will see um, but what's the more to explain it's here right when we in it completely we go here we insert index uh, 0 we insert node count uh, items we could uh, yes, as well use reset it's also more recommended to use reset and we specify the node count and the thing that's uh, the key thing here is to not notify OSA about it and why is because we don't want the views to be created yet so the views the the game objects don't need to be created yet because we don't have that data we only pre-allocate some memory not all of it but some of the memory here and uh, because then we would uh, we will do this we will uh, create an item for each node and we will insert it in a data helper and we won't notify the adapter about this because maybe if we have 7000 nodes we don't want it doesn't make sense to notify uh, each time so what this does it just allocates some slots in uh, the internal list of properties for each item and uh, next it starts the loop it starts this loop here so we use the xml get next node list properties and using this reference that we stored from here yes all right and we set up we have the loop event preload nodes loop next which goes to next so after which she goes to next and then a finished event yeah. there's no more notes to read and the index is this variable preload all current index which is which is initially zero but here i guess yes here it adds one to it so each time a node is read it stores it and it increments it here this index and we, we store two properties right we retrieve the title property which is hard coded here and url here and we store it in the tmp string and tmp string 2 and then at this point at this state we again building the title with the current index appending the head of the string and this tmp string being the title and we store it here in tmp string 3 and we using this again item creator preload all current index we specify the title which is this freshly built string here and key which rarel which is type string is and it's stored in tmp string 2 remember from here there url all right then we adding one to this preload all count loading things last frame because uh, we need to which is initially zero when first entering here right we adding one here and then we compare if the amount of items loaded since last frame is equal to this to the chunk size which is 100 so if it's equal we need to wait one frame before going again here okay else we go into the finished state and again we are preloading nodes if there are more nodes and let's see what yeah this is not important this is just uh, here's an a progress image that 
its fill amount is set depending on what is the current progress. Yeah. And at this point, this will do. This will loop here. When it finishes, it goes here. Uh, if you don't know how this works, you can read about. It. I don't know if I mentioned this index is incremented each time you enter this state, and then it calls a refresh on the XML controller, which simply refreshes the view and uh, retrieves all the items for the visible items and updates them and goes into idle. This is the controller. Now if we go in the item, this is at a high level, it's the same uh, as before. Uh, it stores the data helper proxy from the controller in the variable for easier access and the recycle again. Then we go into idle retrieve my data and again you are using this try get item uh, from the proxy at the current index these are the properties that you request here you store them title image url and uh, if it doesn't find them for example if you don't use the preload all checkbox it will fire this create item data and you just select a single node. You just say XML select single node, and you use this memory reference ref XML items proxy content. Yeah, it works a bit slow because there are too many of them. XML select single node from this. So the store in memory ref XML items proxy content, right? So the content of this XML proxy, it's used here, right? Let's all right, and uh, the same uh, query only that we are retrieving uh, the same query only that we are adding here. This is uh, another predicate, so another condition for the item. So we want the item at the position this. So we have the current index, right? So what this does underscore zero underscore it also shows here it's something that you can replace with any variable so the current index plus one so what this uh, tells you is give me the items that satisfy this condition and take the item at this position and uh, in xml the first item has the position one so it's a one indexed as opposed to how OSA works and everything in programming works. It's zero indexed. And because the first item is the in the, has the index zero, you would need to add one to it. And it takes the first uh, item for the current index zero, the second for the current index uh, one and so on. We store those properties in these two variables. Okay, if we collapse it, uh, it uh, will go faster. All right, then we build a string here again with the current index appended. Then this is the title, we store it in the MP string tree. And again, we use the item creator and specify the target proxy, the index at which we, we want to create that, that uh, item, and uh, the number of properties. And the properties here, the their keys, key title and key image URL, types and the, their values, right? And then go again and the retrieve my data, call this, and uh, it will find it, and will store it in title and image URL. Then go to update my views, and it does the same as in other examples. It sets the property text of the text component to the value title this title uh, to the value what, what that's in this variable and the image view the remote image behavior source setter it sets this uh, URL and it starts to download it so this is what it does so we have the preload all uh, box checked and take some time to read 30,000 items. So now they are loaded. 
here are they and I will show you also when you uncheck this what it does it goes here and then here and just notifies the author about uh, the count and only then tries to read the items for each visible uh, game object so I press play first it reads the XML it stores it in uh, that reference and each time a new item is visible it calls that create my data and then retrieve my data and this has some disadvantages because as you see it needs to load the nodes individually but it depends if you have I don't know too many nodes or you have a faster method of retrieving individual nodes uh, you maybe you'd use this approach so for a few thousand of I don't know for a few thousand uh, items you can use the preload approach and load all of the items I hope this was useful for you you can find additional help on the forum link below or by email and happy playmaking